Before I bring the main message for today, I want to give you an update and some comments on some very good news I got this morning from a dear brother by email. And this has to do with a statement issued this past Friday by John MacArthur's Grace Community Church in Sun Valley, California, that they are no longer going to comply with the state of California's COVID-19 lockdown orders. And I'm going to explain why, due to his church's corporate status, John MacArthur is standing on some very shaky legal ground, but also why this is still a very bold and courageous move on his part that in effect, actually exposes the lies of the federal and state governments regarding the COVID-19 pandemic and is therefore potentially of great benefit to us all, and for which John MacArthur and his church should be commended. This is from an article that appeared yesterday in the Daily Wire. The title of the article is as follows, Compliance would be disobedience. Prominent California church defies state lockdown to resume in-person assembly. The subtitle is, quote, We cannot and will not acquiesce to a government-imposed moratorium on our weekly congregational worship. Pastor and elders of a prominent evangelical church in California issued a statement on Friday explaining why they will no longer comply with the state's mandate ordering them to refrain from in-person gatherings. John MacArthur, the 81-year-old senior pastor of Grace Community Church in Sun Valley, California, also claimed that the state had overstepped its legitimate God-given authority Citing Christ and the Bible as the ultimate authority over his congregation, MacArthur wrote in the lengthy blog post replete with scripture that we cannot and will not acquiesce to a government-imposed moratorium on our weekly congregational worship or other regular corporate gatherings. Although they have been doing so for 20 weeks. Compliance would be disobedience to our Lord's clear commands. MacArthur went on to explain the church's view that God has given different spheres authority to the family, the church, the government, and, when, and that when any of these three institutions exceeds the bounds of its jurisdiction, it is the duty of the other institutions to curtail that overreach. MacArthur also suggested that the statistics government officials have offered as justification for their sweeping mandates may not be accurate. Mm -hmm. May not. Quote, history is full of painful reminders that government power is easily and frequently abused for evil purposes. Politicians may manipulate Statistics and the media can cover up or camouflage inconvenient truths. So a discerning church cannot passively or automatically comply if the government orders a shutdown of congregational meetings, even if the reason given is a concern for public health and safety. The article says, citing the historical precedent of Christians often being persecuted by their own governments, MacArthur warned, as government policy moves further away from biblical principles and as legal and political pressures against the church intensify, we must recognize that the Lord may be using these pressures as means of purging to reveal the true church. And to that, I would just insert the suggested correction that in the case of MacArthur's church, the Lord may instead be using these pressures as a means of purging, not just to reveal the true church, but actually to finally wake up those who had such state-created corporations as MacArthur's church, as almost all other churches across the land are, to see that these organizations that are incorporated under the laws of the state are not true New Testament churches. The article continues, The church's move comes less than two weeks after Democratic California Governor Gavin Newsom issued another round of lockdown orders on July 13 after initially rolling back the ones from March. 30 counties, or about 80% of the state's population, were placed under the new order, which shuts down houses of worship, as well as restaurants, bars, gyms, and other types of businesses. In a few paragraphs appended to the original statement, uh, MacArthur explained why his church at first obeyed the initial lockdown order, but have since changed their mind, writing in part, when the devastating lockdown began, it was supposed to be a short-term stopgap measure with the goal to flatten the curve, and there were some horrific projections of death. As Donald Trump said, 2.2 million deaths. And now Trump is, of course, saying, we've saved millions of lives. In light of those factors, our pastors supported the measures by observing the guidelines that were issued for churches. But we did not yield our spiritual authority to the secular government. We said from the very start that our voluntary compliance was subject to change if the restrictions dragged on beyond the stated goal or politicians unduly intruded into church affairs, which, of course, they <laughs> did initially. He continues, or if health officials added restrictions that would attempt to undermine the church's mission. 
But we are now more than 20 weeks into the unrelieved restrictions. It's apparent that those original projections of death were wrong and the virus is nowhere near as dangerous as originally feared. And I would say amen to that statement. And note here that while John MacArthur is making a bold public statement here, that the virus is nowhere near as dangerous as originally feared. This comes just three days after the liar Donald Trump's July 21st press conference, in which he, of course, made no such acknowledgement and instead pointed to a totally bogus and alleged spike in COVID cases and said that things will get worse before they get better, while also announcing his continued plans to call out the military to vaccinate the population. And I'm guessing it's probably that press conference that spurred this much welcomed decision of defiance from John MacArthur's church. Their statement continues. Still roughly 40% of the year has passed with our church essentially unable to gather in a normal way. Pastor's ability to shepherd their flocks has been severely curtailed. The unity and influence of the church has been threatened. Opportunities for believers to serve and minister to one another have been missed. And the suffering of Christians who are troubled, fearful, distressed, infirm, or otherwise in urgent need of fellowship and encouragement has been magnified beyond anything that could be reasonably considered just or necessary. Major public events that were planned for 2021 are already being canceled, signaling that officials are preparing to keep restrictions in place into next year and beyond. That forces churches to choose between the clear command of our Lord and the government officials. Therefore, following the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, we gladly choose to obey him. At the end of the article, then, was a link to MacArthur's full statement that was posted to the church's website. Those last couple of paragraphs were part of a follow-up addendum that was added later to the church's original statement. That original statement itself was titled, Christ, not Caesar, is head of the church. And I would immediately point out that that is a great title, and it is supposed to be true. In fact, it must be true for a body of New Testament believers to be a true New Testament church. However, while I do hardly command and congratulate and say amen to John MacArthur and his body of elders for taking this stance, I would dare to predict that in the ensuing battle that John MacArthur is getting into with the state, he may well be about to find out why his organization, as a California corporation that was formed in 1956, with his corporate documents being easily accessed online at the California Secretary of State's business search website, its corporate name being Grace Community Church of the Valley, its corporate office address located at 13248 Roscoe Boulevard in Sun Valley, California, and with its corporate number being C0330148, is not a true New Testament church because at law its true creator the state of California is its true master and head. That said, I want to quote and comment on some sections of MacArthur's original statement in which he made some great theological arguments as to why a true church should not submit to the unlawful demands of civil government and must defy government mandates to shut their doors. Uh, that original statement opened as follows. Christ is Lord of all. He is the one true head of the church, Ephesians 1.22, 5.23, Colossians 1.18, same scriptures that we cite. He is also king of kings, sovereign over every earthly authority. Grace Community Church has always stood immovably on those biblical principles, writes MacArthur. I would insert here that that statement shows it appears Brother MacArthur fails to realize or else fails to admit publicly that because his church is incorporated under state law, his church has, has not actually stood immovably on those principles and has, in fact, voluntarily placed itself under the jurisdiction of the state. And sadly, but truthfully, the corporation that owns his multi-million dollar church property is legally bound to obey the laws of the state. That said, however, MacArthur still makes some great points here as would apply to a New Testament church. And the statement really is useful as a great argument for why New Testament churches should not be organized as state corporations. His statement continues. As his people, we are subject to his will and commands as revealed in Scripture. Therefore, we cannot and will not acquiesce to a government-imposed moratorium on our weekly congregational worship or other regular corporate gatherings. Compliance would be disobedience to our Lord's clear commands. 
He writes, when any government official issues orders regulating worship, such as bans on singing, caps on attendance, or prohibitions against gatherings and services, he steps outside the legitimate bounds of his God-ordained authority as a civic official and arrogates to himself authority that God expressly grants only to the Lord Jesus Christ as sovereign over his kingdom, which is the church. I want to point out that statement is in error doctrinally and actually smacks of Roman Catholicism. Christ's kingdom cannot be equated with the church. His kingdom is universal, but his true New Testament churches are not. They should instead be seen as outposts on earth of his universal kingdom. But moving on, MacArthur continues, His rule is mediated to local churches through those pastors and elders who teach his word. He writes, Therefore, in response to the recent state order requiring churches in California to limit or suspend all meetings indefinitely, we, the pastors and elders of Grace Community Church, respectfully inform our civic leaders that they have exceeded their legitimate jurisdiction and faithfulness to Christ prohibits us from observing the restrictions they want to impose on our corporate worship services. He writes, as pastors and elders, we cannot hand over to earthly authorities any privilege or power that belongs solely to Christ as head of his church. Pastors and elders are the ones to whom Christ has given the duty and the right to exercise his spiritual authority in the church. 1 Peter 5, Hebrews 13. And scripture alone defines how and whom they are to serve. 1 Corinthians 4, 1 through 4. And again, that is true, but only so for a true New Testament church. And sadly, that is not at all true for a state corporation such as MacArthur's church, which must perform according to state corporate law. In his case, actually, though John MacArthur is named publicly as senior pastor of the church, his corporate documents found online and available on request list a man named Chris Hamilton as the CEO of the corporation. They name Richard Harrisick as secretary and Mark Zakovich as chief financial officer and agent for service of process. And so at law, the pastor and elders have surrendered their biblical authority to the corporation's board members, and they have actually become hirelings under that board's authority. So they've surrendered the biblical position that they're supposed to have. The statement continues, they, the pastor and elders, have no duty to follow orders from a civil government attempting to regulate the worship or governance of the church. This is important. He says, in fact, pastors who cede their Christ-delegated authority in the church to a civil ruler have abdicated their responsibility before their Lord and violated the God-ordained spheres of authority as much as a secular official who illegitimately imposes his authority upon the church. Amen. That's absolutely true for a New Testament church. However, again, unfortunately, this church did precisely that when they incorporated the church under state law to get their 501c3 tax exemption. They ceded their Christ-delegated authority to, in the church to a civil ruler back in 1956, long before John MacArthur was even hired as senior pastor when Grace Community Church of the Valley registered with the state of California as a domestic nonprofit corporation. They did precisely that. They ceded their Christ-delegated authority in the church to a silver ruler, and they fell into Caesar's trap. I want to point out that this is uh, these arguments that John MacArthur is giving here are basically the same type of arguments that were given by Brother Everett Sullivan, who was pastor of the Faith Baptist Church of Louisville, Nebraska, who back in 1983 spent 297 days in jail because their church refused to license their Christian school. And also the seven fathers who are all members of the church also spent 97 days in the same jail. And their crime uh, was to dare to operate a church school without state certified teachers. I'm going to quote here from uh, Dr. Greg Dixon's very valuable book, The Trail of Blood Revisited, as he then also in turn quotes from Brother Sullivan's book, The Lessons of Louisville. He said, it was well into this case in the year 1983 after I had already been to a jail a couple of times. I was serving my third round of contempt of court when the Honorable Judge Raymond Case asked the sheriff to bring me in one night from the jail cell about 10 p.m. to his office on the second floor of the Cass County Courthouse. 
He says, the judge invited me in, spoke to me in very humble terms, and said he wanted to visit with me for a few minutes. He first began by asking me to close the school. When I refused, he asked if I would move it outside his jurisdiction. Again, I refused. He then made a statement that got my attention. He said, Pastor. He then pulled from the file the pleadings that had been filed and asked me to read the heading. I said, the state of Nebraska et al., Attorney General Paul Douglas versus the Faith Baptist Church, a Nebraska corporation. He then asked me, is that a heavenly corporation? I replied, no. He asked me, well, what kind of corporation is that? I responded, according to the heading, it is a Nebraska corporation. He then asked me, who owns your buildings? I answered, the Faith Baptist, uh, I'm beginning to see the light. The corporation owns the property, I said. Ah, Nebraska. He said, that's right. He told me he was going to padlock my church again, and he wanted to explain to me that that was the most charitable thing he could do since the leaders in Lincoln, Nebraska, have requested that he bulldoze it down and burn it. And the state had the jurisdiction to do so because those properties belong to a corporation owned by the state of Nebraska, and it is breaking the laws of the state, which the charter forbids. End quote. So that's the position that MacArthur and every other incorporated church has placed itself in, in incorporating under the laws of the state. The statement continues, though, In short, as the church, we do not need the state's permission to serve and worship our Lord as he commanded. The church is Christ's precious bride, 2 Corinthians 11.2, Ephesians 5. She belongs to him alone. She exists by his will and serves under his authority. He will tolerate no assault on her purity and no infringement of his headship over her. That's correct. Amen. That's why he hates these corporations. All of that was established when Jesus said, I will build my church, and MacArthur writes, the gates of Hades will not overpower it. First of all, that's a misquote there, highlighting MacArthur's compromise in another very important area. The true Bible, King James Version, says the gates of hell will not prevail against his church not merely the gates of Hades or or the grave. And furthermore, that's a great description here of what the church is supposed to be. But an incorporated church is an adulterous bride. She has married herself to another head, the state. But uh, anyway, then MacArthur cites to Ephesians 1 as he continues, Christ's own authority is far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the one to come. And God the Father has put all things in subjection under Christ's feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Ephesians 1, 21 to 23. That, of course, is the main scripture that we cite in explaining why a true New Testament church must not be incorporated under the laws of the state. MacArthur continues, The biblical order is clear. Christ is Lord over Caesar, not vice versa. Christ, not Caesar, is head of the church. I have to say that Brother MacArthur is really making some great points here about why his church should not be incorporated. (laughs) He really is. Great points about why a church should not be incorporated. And perhaps before Jesus returns, MacArthur will see that as well. Or if he already does, he'll have the courage to repent and, you know, to admit it and repent. But skipping through some more of this, he says, an additional point needs to be made in this context. Christ is always faithful and true, Revelation 19.11. Human governments are not so trustworthy. Scripture says the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. That's a misquote there from the wrong Bible, but he writes, This refers, of course, to Satan. John 12, 31 and 16, 11 call him the ruler of this world, meaning he wields power and influence through this world's political systems. Jesus said of him, He is a liar and the father of lies. History is full of painful reminders that government power is easily and frequently abused for evil purposes. Then he writes, Politicians may manipulate statistics, and the media can cover up or camouflage inconvenient truths, as obviously they're doing here. So he writes, A discerning church cannot passively or automatically comply if the government orders a shutdown of congregational meetings, even if the reason given is a concern for public health and safety. He goes on to say the church, by definition, is an assembly. That's the literal meaning of the Greek word for a church, ecclesia. The assembly are the called out ones. A non-assembling assembly is a contradiction in terms. Amen. A church that can't assemble is not a church, period. 
That's why the universal invisible church can't be a church. Christians are therefore, writes MacArthur, commanded not to forsake the practice of meeting together, Hebrews 10.25, and no earthly state has a right to restrict, delimit, or forbid the assembling of believers. We have always supported the underground church in nations where, where Christian congregational worship is deemed illegal by the state, writes MacArthur. And yet, they stopped meeting as a church for the last 20 weeks, and they're finally seeing these things. I'm cutting out a lot of this. It was a very long statement, but it's important. Where was the statement? It was, it was written by MacArthur, posted to their website. It was a blog that he posted to his website. You can, I can send you the link and you can go there and read it. MacArthur then makes some very important statements as to why churches should never have stopped meeting in the first place. He says, when officials restrict church attendance to a certain number, they attempt to impose a restriction that in principle makes it impossible for the saints to gather as a church. When officials prohibit singing and worship services, they attempt to impose a restriction that in principle makes it impossible for the people of God to obey the commands of Ephesians 5.19 and Colossians 3.16. When officials mandate distancing, they attempt to impose a restriction that in principle makes it impossible to experience the close communion between believers that is commanded in Romans 16.16, 16, 1 Corinthians 16.20. In all those spheres, we must submit to our Lord. Amen. Great points there. Skipping down through more of the statement, MacArthur closes as follows. But again, Christ is the one true head of his church, and we intend to honor that vital truth in all our gatherings. For that preeminent reason, we cannot accept and will not bow to the intrusive restrictions government officials now want to impose on our congregation. We offer this response without rancor and not out of hearts that are combative or rebellious but with a sobering awareness that we must answer to the Lord Jesus for the stewardship he has given to us as shepherds of his precious flock. To government officials, we respectfully say with the apostles, whether it is right in the sight of God to give heed to you rather than to God, you be the judge, Acts 4.19. And our unhesitating reply to that question is the same as the apostles. We must obey God rather than men, Acts 5.29. Our prayer is that every faithful congregation will stand with us in obedience to our Lord as Christians have done through the centuries. John MacArthur. So that is the closing of the original statement as released by the church. Apparently then, after posting that original statement, as questions began to pour into the church, then why did the church submit to the mandates in the first place? The church then later posted a follow-up addendum. And that follow-up addendum began with these words, Below, we want to answer the primary question we have received in response to the statement. Why did you submit to the original government order? Citing Romans 13 and 1 Peter 2. So apparently, several people noticed the contradiction or perhaps the hypocrisy in the original statement, having first cited Romans 13 and 1 Peter 2 as their reason for shutting their doors. So he writes, The elders of Grace Church considered and independently consented to the original government order. Not because we believe the state has a right to tell churches when, whether, or how to worship. Well, then why did they cite Romans 13, 1 Peter 2? If you say, we're not going to meet together because this might be a dangerous virus, that's one thing. Yeah. But then if you cite Romans 13 and 1 Peter 2 as your pretext for doing that, then it's because you're obeying the government. So which is it? So that's why they asked him the question. He, didn't, he really kind of dodged, it, dodged the question in his answer. He says, to be clear, we believe that the original orders were just as much an illegitimate intrusion of state authority into ecclesiastical matters as we believe it is now. However, because we could not possibly have known the true severity of the virus and because we care about people as our Lord did, we believe guarding public health against serious contagions is a rightful function of Christians as well as civil government. Therefore, we voluntarily followed the initial recommendations of our government. But we are now, writes MacArthur, more than 20 weeks into the unrelieved restrictions. It is apparent, he writes, that those original projections of death were wrong and the virus is nowhere near as dangerous as originally feared. Still, roughly 40% of the year has passed with our church essentially unable to gather in the normal way. Pastors' ability to shepherd their flocks has been severely curtailed. The unity and influence of the church has been threatened. Opportunities for believers to serve and minister to one another have been missed. And the suffering of Christians who are troubled, fearful, distressed, infirm, or otherwise in urgent need of fellowship and encouragement has been magnified beyond anything that could reasonably 
be considered just or necessary. Major public events that were planned for 2021 are already being canceled, signaling that officials are preparing to keep restrictions in place into next year and beyond. That forces churches to choose between the clear command of our Lord and the government officials. Therefore, following the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, we gladly choose to obey Him. And I say amen. And for such a statement to be written and published as this, although there remains some hypocrisy here in, in the statement due to his church's corporate status, and also because he initially cited Romans 13 as his pretext for shutting the church's doors, I still congratulate and commend John MacArthur for finally taking this stand, even if it's 20 weeks later than it should have come. I would have no idea why it took America's favorite theologian, John MacArthur, 20 weeks to figure this out, but I'm certainly glad he did so. And I have to say that it restores some of the respect that I lost for John MacArthur several years ago, especially since in this statement, MacArthur makes a point that we are being lied to by the government and that our government is indeed operating under the power of Satan. And also recognizing that this wicked government plans to keep this fraud, this huge fraud going for the next year, probably. I've, I've read from some sources throughout the next year, at least. Thankfully, there is finally a backlash and increasing resistance to the massive fraud of this alleged pandemic, of which this is only one example. However, this is huge, given the, the immense influence John MacArthur has in Christian circles today. And hopefully more will take this stand. And as time goes on, and as more of the book of Revelation begins to unfold as it's going to do, I would expect John MacArthur to also finally realize that his sellout to dispensational pre-trib rapturism was also an error. He'll figure that out as well. And so that'll do it for my current affairs update for today.